What's up everyone, my name is Miles and this is the Make With Miles channel and today I'm going to be showing you how I built this super rad TV lift cabinet with a hidden feature. Let's go! For this build I decided to use some 3 quarter inch walnut plywood which I already had laying around from a different project. I'm really digging the look of walnut plywood right now and I was super stoked with how my guitar amp build turned out so I decided to use it again on this project. This is actually my first time building a piece of furniture of this size, as well as my first time making a large mitered box, so I was really just figuring things out as I went. First, I used a track saw to rip down all the sides of the cabinet carcass. There was a lot of planning beforehand to get the right dimensions so the TV would have enough clearance on all sides. I made sure to cut all of these pieces a little bit longer lengthwise than my final dimensions, this way I would have plenty of room to cut the miters. It was now time to cut the mitered corners, so I used some blue tape on both sides of the piece to prevent chip out when cutting. I ended up using the track saw to cut the miters, but it was a little bit precarious, so in the future I think I'll be using a sled on the table saw. Once I had 145 cut, I measured and marked the exact length the pieces needed to be, and then cut the rest of the miters. Next, I marked out the area on the top panel for where the opening of the TV would be. I then carefully cut out that section with the track saw. This piece that I just cut out, I will later be making into the lid that covers the opening. I finished off the cuts at the corners using my Japanese saw and set aside the middle piece for later. It was now time to address how I was going to put this whole box together. I was able to borrow my friend Alex's domino jointer which made this box go together much faster. Huge thanks to Alex for letting me borrow his domino. After marking out the domino placement, I cut the slots using the tight setting and did a test fit. Before I could start assembling the carcass, I had to cut a rabbit on the inside edge of all the pieces so a back panel could slot in later on. I did this by taking repeated cuts on the table saw and then moving the fence slightly until I'd achieved the width I was going for. Now that I cut the rabbits on all four pieces, I was ready to start the glue up. I added some masking tape on both the inside and outside faces to prevent any glue drips. I always try my best to prevent having to sand off the glue, especially with this walnut plywood which has a pretty thin face veneer. This is actually the biggest glue up I've done and probably the most stressful as well. The glue was drying pretty quickly because of how hot it was outside, but luckily I managed to get the miters to close up pretty tightly thanks to all my rockler clamps. This strap clamp also proved to be really handy in pulling all the joints together. Now that it was all clamped up, I could take a deep sigh of relief and unclamp it the next morning. Now that I'd built the main carcass, I could work on making a substrate, which is going to be the front panel. Once I'd fitted the substrate, I used my pocket hole jig to drill some holes in pieces of plywood, which the front panel could be screwed to.
Next, I screwed all the supports to the inside of the cabinet at the same distance from the front edge. It was now time to create a hidden switch or button, which was part of my initial design for this piece. The TV lift hardware I'll be using came with a small rocker switch, which was unfortunately too small to be able to conceal. However, it also included this small remote, so I thought I would try and create a small pocket for it to friction fit into. Then I would be able to create a wood switch above it, which would press the buttons of the remote. This was an interesting idea, but you'll later see why it didn't work and what my final solution is for this problem. After adding a small piece of felt to make sure that the remote fit snugly, I cut out an opening at the bottom of the substrate for where the sound bar would go. I then attached the front panel by using some pocket hole screws from the back. At this point, I decided I wanted the outer walnut case to have a chunkier and more solid look to it, so I glued on some quarter inch strips of plywood which I'd veneered myself. I'm really happy that I made this decision and I think it adds to the overall aesthetic of this piece of furniture. Next thing was making a mitered frame that would enclose the sound bar area. For this, I just used some strips of 3 quarter inch plywood. After gluing that in, I added two pieces of quarter inch walnut ply to either side to complete the look of the chunkier outer frame. Next came what is probably my favorite part of building a box, the edge banding. Since this is a larger piece of furniture, I decided to go extra thick and cut some quarter inch strips of walnut. I then used my sled to cut the mitered corners. Using thicker solid wood as edge banding not only provides the flexibility if you want to round over the edge, but it also is a lot more durable than using iron on edge banding. For edge banding, I really like to use both wood glue as well as some CA glue to act as a clamp. If you need to restock on some CA glue, you can use the code MAKEWITHMILES to get 15% off any purchase from Starbond Adhesives. There's a link in the description. Thanks Starbond. After unclamping, I flush trimmed the edges using my router and sanded the entire box up to 220 grit. Next, I added some thinner 1 8 inch edge banding to the inside edge of the top opening. I also added some edge banding to the lid piece, which I'd cut to the right dimensions accounting for the thickness of the edge banding. This did take quite a while to get a perfect fit with just enough room for the lid to fit in the opening. Now that the edge banding was on and I'd sanded the entire cabinet, I added some plywood pieces to the inside edge for the back panel to screw into.
After installing the back panel, I added two tiny pieces of walnut to either side of the opening for the lid to rest on. It was now time for finish. I decided to use some wipe on poly because I liked the way it turned out on my guitar amp build, which was also walnut. It had finally come time to work on the main design feature of this build, which is the three-dimensional wood pattern on the front face. Before starting this build, I had been experimenting with this idea of creating patterns using angled wood blocks. I think this is a great way of creating visual intrigue using affordable materials. For this, I'm just using some dimensional pine lumber from the big box store, which totaled about $25. After cleaning up all four sides to get rid of the rounded corners, I set the blade to around 25 degrees and ripped the pieces in half. I then used my small parts sled to cut exactly 500 of these small angled blocks. The table saw blade left a fairly rough finish on the pine, so I set up the orbital sander and got to sanding. After sanding all 500 of the pieces, I glued all the blocks together in pairs using CA glue. So now is about the time when I realized that using the remote as the switch was not going to work, and here's why. My plan was to add two contact points to the bottom of one of the blocks which would line up exactly with the buttons of the remote. Then the block itself could act as a rocker switch pushing the buttons of the remote. But once I'd installed it, it became quickly apparent that the small plastic buttons of the remote were getting jammed and stuck. So I quickly changed plans and found a large rocker switch which I replaced the old small switch with. After hot gluing it in, I used some 5 minute epoxy to attach one of the blocks on top, which would be our hidden switch. The time had finally come to glue all of the pieces in and create the pattern. After custom cutting the entire last row of blocks, I could really see the build coming together. I could now focus on some of the final details to finish off this project. After finishing the front patterned wood and letting that dry, I started installing a piano hinge for the lid. I used a self-centering drill bit for this entire process which made the alignment much easier. I then attached the lid to the hinge using CA glue and also use some playing cards to make sure that the gap around the edge was even. This ensures that the lid won't be installed too tight for it to open easily. Once the CA glue had dried, I could come back and add the screws.
I now had to remove the back panel to install the motorized lift. This is the slimmest TV lift kit I could find on Amazon, and overall it was pretty simple to install. I've added a link in the description to the one I used in case you want to go check it out. I also used a large forcener bit to drill an access hole for the cords, and then hammered in a trim piece which I had laying around. I could finally add some small hairpin legs to the bottom, and I added a link in the description to the ones that I used in case you want to pick some up for your projects. The last thing left to do was install the TV with the provided mounting screws, plug in the soundbar, and with that, this build was complete. Overall, I feel like I learned a lot with this project and I'm super stoked with the final result. I'm definitely going to be experimenting more with creating some three-dimensional patterns like I did with this one. If you got anything out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and shared this with someone who might be interested. Also, if you wanna see more of my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.